Welcome to City Service Committee. I'm City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge Chair, and I'm joined by Ward 2 City Councilor Karen Foster, Vice, and City Councilor Michael Quinlan from Ward 2, and also City Councilor Rachel Mior from Ward 7. This meeting is called to order. Roll call, Laura. Sure. <laughs> Councilor LaBarge. Here. Councilor Foster. Here. Councillor Quinlan. Here. And Councillor Maori. Here. I will, I would like to announce this meeting is being audio video recorded. Public comment. Is there any members of the public who would like to address the committee on any subject? There is one member of the public present. Um, Rose Chana is the name. Um, I can unmute that person to see. Let's see. Oh dear. I thought I could. You know, there's not a microphone, so perhaps I'm not able to. Um, yeah, I don't see a way to unmute the guest. Oh, I wonder if she can hear you. Yes. So, um, the person identified as Rose Chana, were you interested in making a public comment? I don't see a response. Huh. Maybe if you possibly tell her about the hand situation, maybe that would help. If you're interested in making a public comment, you can use the raised hand feature on Zoom which I believe um, is under the reactions um, tab on your taskbar. Okay, well, well, we'll come, okay. Well, we tried. Thank you, Laura. Thanks. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of February 1st, 2021. Unfortunately, they are not ready for acceptance. Number five, items referred to committee, A21.232, an appointment to Charlene Nardi as finance director referred by city council on April 1st, 2021. I want to welcome Mayor David Narkowitz and he will give an introduction of the new finance director, Charlene Nardi. Thank you, Mayor, for being here again. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Councilor LaBarge, and thank you to the members of the uh, City Services Committee for having me here today. Um, I am uh, very pleased to be able to um, introduce you today to uh, Charlene Nardi, um, who is my appointment to become the city's next finance director. Um, Charlene uh, has served as town administrator for Williamsburg uh, since 2011. Uh, prior to that, she was the town administrator for the town of Chesterfield. Uh, she was also the town clerk in Williamsburg for 10 years and served on the Williamsburg School Committee. Uh, she has a bachelor's degree in business uh, from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Um, and I believe that she brings a wealth of administrative, budgetary, and leadership skills uh, to the city's financial management team. And so I'm honored uh, to appoint her. Uh, just by way of background, um, uh, I worked with a, a small but highly skilled uh, screening committee um, in this selection, which has been my practice for all of my uh, departmental appointments. Um, so I had a small uh, screening committee um, comprised of, first of all, led by um, our HR director, uh, Glenda Stoddard. Um, it included the, uh, my chief of staff, um, Alan Wolf. It included the, um, the uh, department head of one of our largest and most complex departments, uh, uh, DPW uh, Director Donald Lascalia. Um, it also included the finance director for the town of Amherst, uh, Sean Mangiano, um, as well as the chair of your finance committee and obviously the president of the city council, uh, Councilor Gina Luis Chiara. 
So, um, and I worked with them on this process and uh, Charlene was uh, both the top choice of the screening committee um, and she is, was my uh, top choice and reason why she is my appointee. Um, I can also say that I've had the opportunity to work with her um, during my time um, as mayor. Uh, she, uh, as you know, we have um, ongoing relationships and collaborations with the town of Williamsburg on many different projects. So I've had the opportunity to interact with her um, over these last several years. And um, she is a professional and someone with a wealth of municipal experience. Um, she's well respected in her, uh, among her peers um, here in Western Massachusetts. Um, and, um, and I believe she will be a highly successful um, as our city's next finance director. So with that, I will introduce you to Charlene Nardi and let her tell you more about herself and answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mayor Narkowitz for that uh, great introduction. Um, I am very honored to be chosen for this position and I look forward to uh, starting and becoming a member of the team for the city of Northampton. Um, I'm happy to, you know, I'm not sure what you would like to know, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Welcome, Charlene. Um, Thank you. It's a pleasure having you here. And I think the mayor had a lot to say that is extremely valuable for all of us counselors of knowing who the mayor has appointed and his reasons why. I wanted you to know that counselors do have specific questions for you. And I know you received some of mine today, and I'm sorry for the lateness on that, but I have had computer problems. So anyways, I am asking my colleagues of them presenting any questions they would like, and I am going to present mine last. Thank you. So counselors, does anybody want to ask any questions? Councillor Quinlan. Uh, th thank you very much, Councillor Labarge. Thank you, Ms. Nardi, for being here and, and Mayor Narquitz as well, of course, for your presentation. Um, Charlene, I wonder if you can just kind of describe, uh, I have two questions, basically. One, one is, uh, if you could just kind of describe the differences between the town administrator, which I think is a little bit broader scope than the finance director and how you, uh, how you feel, you know, for yourself, kind of narrowing your focus, but in, in a larger uh, community, what, that, what that's going to be like for you. So actually, yes, you're right. The town administrator position is a lot broader scope um, because we handle a lot more of everything. Um, but in depth. So you're absolutely right. The position in Northampton will be more focused on the finance um, aspects. Um, so I won't have to, you know, my focus won't be divided. Um, there is stuff that I will definitely have to learn. And as I spoke with Mayor Narkowitz um, and the search committee, we talked about there's many opportunities for training um, which I'm very interested in taking, but, but the aspects that the city and the towns do are the same for setting the budget, when we go out for bonding, when we do our, you know, our bond rating, all of those, um, all of those process are the same. Um, it's just, we're dealing with bigger numbers in the city of Northampton. Great. Uh, thank you. And then just, uh, well, you, it's funny that you mentioned training because that was kind of my question was, uh, do, do, as you look at this new position here, do you do view anything, any parts of it as potential challenges for yourself, things that you're not familiar with? I mean, I imagine as a town administrator, like you just mentioned, you, you've kind of been doing a lot of what you're, you will be doing, but is, are there any challenges there that you've identified things that you're concerned about? Absolutely. Um, and some of those, the things that Mayor Narkowitz and I have already spoken with, um, there is absolutely, um, financial in, uh, groups that I know um, financial director Wright is already involved in, and I hope to be part of those. I also know that there's a collector and treasurer training, which happens every August. Um, and I know there's been money put aside and I'm very interested in attending that. I know that um, financial director Wright did that when she started as well. Um, so those are areas, you know, like I know a little bit about, but I don't know a lot of detail. I'm also very pleased because I know a lot of the department heads that you have are well respected, very knowledgeable. So um, I look forward to to working with them and having them, you know, bring me up to speed on really what their departments do and what their challenges are and what they need support most on. 
Great. That's great. I'll just say, uh, lastly, uh, I think you can play on hearing from the council. I know it seems like almost every time that that uh, Susan Wright joins us in a meeting, one of the counselors says, oh, I talked to Susan this week and she walked me through this and she's always been very patient and everything. So I'm sure you're going to get to know us pretty well, too. Uh, well, thanks I look for, forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other counsel counselor Foster? Thanks, Councillor, and thank you, Mayor, and um, Charlene, it's really nice to, to meet you. Um, I have three questions for you. Um, I could either ask them one at a time or all together if um, if you don't mind holding on to it. They're all, you know, it's, it's up however you prefer. One at a time would be great. Okay, I guess my first one is um, what drew you to, um, from Williamsburg, but to the finance director um, in Northampton job, what was the, um, what was the p appeal for you there? Well, I think, you know, as, as Councillor Quinlan pointed out, this is kind of more focused. So, you know, over the last 10 years or actually 14 years, I've been learning a lot about, you know, what, what towns and cities have to do in the state of Massachusetts. And I've really um, began to have, a, a, you know, more interest in the financial aspects. Um, I think that's the most important part for a lot of your communities. In addition to having that great um, relationship with our community, our foundation is our financial aspect. So when this position um, became available, I, I you know, thought this was a great opportunity for me to learn more and to grow and learn. So um, you know, it's a neighboring community. And as Mayor Narkowitz said, um, Williamsburg and Northampton has partnered very well. And I know a lot of people in Northampton and I have great respect for the city and the people who work there. So I thought it would be a good opportunity for me. And I thought I could add value to the town uh, city as well. Thank you. Um, and my, my second question then is, as we're looking at COVID recovery, I'm sure you have experience and you've been looking ahead um, in Williamsburg as well, but I'm curious kind of what challenges and opportunities you see within the finance director role in, in assisting with the COVID recovery. Well, I know there's a lot of money coming from the federal government. We're talking about the ARPA funds. You know, we've had CARES Act funds as well as you have. Um, you know, I certainly don't know all the details of Northampton, so I don't pretend, like certainly can't say what should be done there, but with the ARPA funds, we know there's four main reasons um, or four broad reasons we can use those mo that money. Um, and in part is to help um, our businesses and how that looks in the city of Northampton. I know Susan and the mayor have talked a little bit about that. I'm not really enough up to speed, but how we're gonna help our businesses come back. Um, the second thing is um, for using it for um, premium pay, um, which is you know not something I think we need to do, and I'm not sure it's recommended at this point. Um, you know, there's also, um, we can use that money to um, reimburse or fill in where our revenues are low. And I know city of Northampton has been challenged there with the meals tax, your parking, um, your, the revenue you take in from the marijuana dispensaries. Um, so you could fill in there. And then I think the fourth reason is the infrastructure for water and sewer. Um, I know even in your budget, I think you use some funding because of losses in that area as well. So that would be another area. Um, and I think you've been talking about broadband too, and I'm sorry, I don't know enough to really speak about that. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity for the finance director um, to support the mayor and you know the ideas that they have to use that funding to help the city recover. Thanks. Um, and then I guess my last question is maybe, you know, you started to do this a little bit answering the last one, um, but as a finance director, you'll definitely be spending time, as Councilor Quinlan alluded to, talking counselors through questions we have. And then I think there's also a sort of public education component to the budget in addition to your work with department heads. And I, I was just wondering how you approach that in Williamsburg or if you find yourself taking on those multiple sort of hats within the finance world. So yeah, I, I think town administrators have the pleasure of, um, you know, not only do they work with their department heads, um, you know, to talk about the real details, but we also have to talk on town meeting floor. And that's a big public meeting with a lot of voters who aren't necessarily familiar with how government works. Um, some have never come to town meeting before. They don't understand how all that paperwork got developed and what's behind it. So that's really been my job. And although I don't always speak, it's usually my words that people are speaking because I put together explanations for the people who do speak. So um, I think in both cases, I've had a lot of experience doing that. Um, 
you know, I, I'm not a person who, who needs to use big words or be the smartest person in the room. I just, my role is to make sure that everybody I'm with or that we're working with understands the process. So um, I do think I'm really, I'd like to believe I'm really good at that. And I do that often. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Councilor Mariard. Yeah, the two questions I had um, Councilor Foster asked, we're simpatico like that. So you've covered it. Um, so I really just want to say, uh, you know, I, I really look forward to working with you and I, I can, I can, I sense you're a patient person who will uh, be able to deal with us counselors coming in with questions and inquiries and yeah, so welcome, so welcome. Um, I, I look forward to you taking your position and working with you, Charlene. Thank you. Yes, Charlene, um, the three questions I sent to you um, this morning to the mayor's office, how do the practices that you utilize in a small town transfer to a large community? What is the population, Charlene, in Williamsburg? Northampton, we're like 28,000 something. What's the population in Williamsburg? 2,500. How much? 2,500, 2,500. Thank you for that. Now, though you will be new to this position, what might you anticipate as immediate challenges? Can you talk about so I apologize, Councillor Labarge. I, I did not check my personal email today. I'm sorry, today was really busy. So I apologize, I didn't get your questions, but I will do my best to answer them. Um, so your question was, um, could you repeat that for me, please? I sure will. Though you will be new to this position, what might you anticipate as immediate challenges? Well, I think the city of Northampton, I mean, obviously you are much larger, but you have, you have so many things going on and there's so much happening in Northampton. Um, so I think for me, it will be really learning all the players in Northampton. Um, not only, not only the, the topics and the thing, the challenges that are before all of you on a daily basis, but also who the players are and who I need to work with. Um, I think it's also learning um, the direct people that I will be working with, the auditors, the parking um, department, and um, the collector treasurer, learning and meeting with those people. Those to me, I feel like maybe aren't the biggest challenges, but are those my first goals is to get to know people, um, to really learn where the focus should be um, with the finances as we move forward. I know um, Susan has been there a long time, so I look forward to her kind of outlining rolling things out a little bit for me. I'm so thankful we have the next month and week together to do that. Um, but I think the challenges is just you are much larger. And like I said, I'm not so much worried about the process themselves, but just all the people and all the players and all the pieces. Um, because I think, you know, I need, I need to understand the people I'm working with to do the best job and to provide the best information for those people. Charlene, I think you answered that very, very well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and my third one, communication is so important, especially with so many city departments and the school system. What are your best methods for communicating, keeping everyone in the loop, including very valuable of city councilors? So I do think communication is really important. Um, you know even when it's difficult communication and communication is important. Um, I think under COVID, it makes it a little more difficult. Um, but my, my um, what I have always done is I feel it's really important to, to see people face to face, to get to know them, um, to understand what they do, to actually be able to, to talk with them. That's a little harder now, um, but hopefully we'll be getting back to that. So I just think, you know, keeping, um, not only my door open, but physically getting up and going to other people's doors so I can understand, um, get to know them, know what they need from me. Um, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people. I met people at the fire department when I got my vaccination and they were like, we talk to Susan all the time, our financial director, right? And so I've talked to a lot of people, so I know she's out there. Um, so my, I think my, my job and my priority is to maintain that communication and to get out there and make sure my face is um, out there and that my phone number and my email and everything is available to everybody all the time. 
I, I have to say, I thank you for what I just heard from you because it's very, very valuable. And also too with Susan Wright. Susan, I have worked with her for many, many years. And there was not one time that I had called her that she did not work me through a serious financial problem. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlene, I thank you for answering my questions and thank you for being here. And I know you will make out well, everything takes time and you've got my support 100% and I know my colleagues. So thank you for being here and also with our mayor. Okay. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you very much for um, hosting us today. And I would, I would have just closed by saying that I think one of the things that made Susan Wright so successful in her roles in the city, um, and she, she's pointed to this many times, is she started out as a small town administrator. That's how she spent the early part of her career. And, um, and you, you literally learn every aspect of municipal government when you're a town administrator. So it's not just numbers on a spreadsheet. It's not like you actually, because part of being finance director is the numbers, but also putting the numbers with the operations. And so I think, you know, so anyway, I think, um, uh, I know Susan Wright is really excited about uh, Charlene and thinks she'll be a great, uh, a great successor. So I know she's looking forward to working with her. And I know she's been working on a big memo for you to read uh, Charlene <laughs> with every, all of the brain dump of everything she does and when thank she does it. So uh, she's looking forward to you getting started. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I truly appreciate your support. Thank and you. I hope to, I will not let you down. Thank you. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve the appointment of Charlene Darling, Darn as our new finance director with a positive recommendation to full city council. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And thank, thank you, you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. thank you all. Thank you. Have a good thank rest you. of the day. Yeah, you thank too. Thank you for joining us. Okay, we're on number six. New business. Discuss, compile questions for animal control officer. Uh, um, Laura, do you want to speak about that? I was uh, just saying that um, they, Mayor Narkowitz had asked that you please try to have specific questions available for her since she's not a department head and not used okay. to meeting with the city council. So that's why we wanted to take a few moments so I can get them to her as soon as possible. So are we gonna send our questions to you, Laura, and you send them to the mayor's office? I even thought we would discuss them right now, but I guess that's not necessarily necessary. Um, I was just thinking in terms of getting them to the mayor's office. Um, ahead of time, but you know, we, if you guys would just send them to me, that would work too. Okay, because I need some time to think about what I'd like to ask. I don't so know that, how the other counselors feel. Counselor Quinlan. Well, that meeting is June 7th. Um, so maybe Laura, if you uh, have an idea of what you think a proper deadline would be that we should have everything to you, when, do we wanna give two weeks uh, to turn? Yeah, them? that sounds good. So now we're at the 10th. 10th one. May 21st, is that the Friday? May 21st is Friday, yes. Would that work? That's fine. I think that's two weeks, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Quinlan. Okay. Um, Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor I just, yeah. If you don't mind on that on that topic, I just wanted to make sure. I think when we had scheduled um, for Shayla to come, we had a, a location for an animal control facility under active consideration, and so I just wanted to make sure that that everybody knows the update, which is that the city's continuing to search for a location. It will um, it will not be at the proposed site on Chapel Street, um, so that might change a little bit how we're approaching questions uh, to Shayla, but it's. Uh, there, there's not a site under active consideration right now, although the city is continuing to search for one. We'll keep that in mind, Councillor. Thank you. Okay, 
Um, B, process scheduling for end of year reappointments. Laura, <clears throat> Laura has written down on a process note, 15 reappointments are expected to be referred to city council by May 6, 2020, I mean, March, May 6, 2021. Well, we already received those 15. So Court Klein estimates another 10 referrals for reappointment will be presented at the 520-2021 City Council meeting to fill vacancies due to terms expiring on June 30th, 2021. And I think this is critical what the mayor's office is saying here, that the mayor's office has reached out to related staff to confirm that all incumbents are interested willing to continue their service. And if I can recall with our city committee last time, a couple of years, well, a year and a half ago, this was brought up because we ended up with a tremendous amount of reappointments. Reappointments, remember that, Laura? Yeah. Huge, and there was great concerns about this. Now that we are hearing from the mayor's office, which we didn't hear anything before, about how they have reached out to related staff to confirm that all incumbents are interested, willing to continue to serve. And since I've been on city service this time, some of the people that I have called that were reappointments already told me that they were notified by their chair of if they still wanted to be on it. So I don't know, I wanna hear from you counselors. Do you want to go ahead? and recall reappointments. I can see appointments, that's critical, but reappointments who've already been called and verified, and then we're going back again and calling them. I wanna hear from you, please. Raise your hand, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> well, I mean, I was, uh, when, when, when I saw the email the other day that there were 10 more coming, I thought, oh, that's not bad, 15 this time and 10 next time. And then it occurred to me about an hour later, oh no, it's all 25 before our next, you know, referred to us before our next meeting. And then, you know, we, we wanna get those done, obviously. Uh, I think our slate in June, at the end of May and June is pretty big as is. Um, but, I, but I also wondered if, if there isn't value in us somehow, some way reaching out to these people. Originally, I, the other thing I kind of brainstormed was one idea about, should we divide it by committee? And then all of a sudden I looked and said, the 15 people that we have now are on nine different committees. So that doesn't really, that was not that great an idea after all. Um, but so it's, I'm, I'm a little perplexed because I, I do feel there's value in, in speaking to these folks, even though they're reappointments. I understand what you think, Councilor Labarge, about the, that maybe it's not necessary. So I, I'm, I'm anxious to hear uh, what Councilors Foster and Mayori think too. Um, but you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable kind of saying if these people are already participating and want to continue to, that we lighten our load a little bit. Council Mayor, do you want to talk? Yeah, I appreciate that, Councilor Quinlan. My thoughts are, you know, I believe, I, I, I know there is value um, on a practical level with, with how busy we're going to be in May, I, I feel like um, it's more of a cost benefit analysis than whether there's value. So my vote would be uh, to, to, to kind of let, uh, to go with what the, the mayor's office has done and not, and not recall them at this point. Thank you, Councilor Mayor. Councilor Foster. Uh, similar to what my colleagues have expressed, the idealist and purist in me would love to call every appointment um, and, and have a thoughtful discussion as we've been able to do. Um, and, you know, at the same time, 25 appointments for one meeting is, we, it wouldn't be the kind of thoughtful discussion we're, discuss, we're talking about anyway. Um, so I, I'm comfortable with, with planning to move appointments as a group, unless, you know, a, the mayor's office or, or a committee chair um, has something additional they'd like us to consider. Thank you, Councilor Foster. Yep. Okay, so Laura, it looks like we have the 15 right now and we have possibly 10 more, maybe we could have more. 
because what was the total we had with the bunch of us before us counselors? It was huge, huge. And um, it was overwhelming with the amount of time that we had to do that. Um, you know, I did ask Laura today because I feel the same way that Karen Counselor Foster has in regards to, because I know I've called some of them who were reappointments and they were not happy about being called when they already had talked with the chair. But I think what needs to be done, Laura, and this is my feelings and I talked with you about it today, that when it's coming to us, at least court or whoever could recheck to make sure that they are definitely going to go ahead and take that position or what group they're in. I mean, he did say that they do call, but what if it's like two months, three months, and it's sitting there. And then all of a sudden, like we have had a couple who moved out of town and they weren't apparently notified that that person had moved out of town. So I'm just worried about the verification here that whoever we're bringing forth as reappointments, that court somehow can verify that with that chair, that it is a definite. Councilor mm -hmm. Quinlan. You're muted. Sorry. Uh, well, I was just looking at the, at the appointments at the, the um, applications that were sent to us and they're all dated in uh, 2021. So I, I do feel like the, the mayor's office here in court specifically handles this usually that, that, that he has kind of vetted that everyone's still qualified uh, and by checking with the in with the various committees that that they are interested in, in remaining. So uh, I, I do feel like we, we know now that these people are all qualified as residents of Northampton, with the one exception of the, the gentleman uh, whose name's escaping me from Hadley that we uh, that's on the Ag Commission. So well, other than I that, I think pretty good about yeah, Mr. Parsons, I knew all about. Mr. Parsons, yeah. Yeah, and anyways, I feel good about this because I think we could take them, like, say, with the Agricultural Commission, take that as a group and work our way down and go ahead and approve them without a problem. And just say, make our motions on them. Take yeah. them all as a group if we wanted to. Go through all their names and take them all as a group. Seems appropriate to me. Does that sound all right? Yes. 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 <laughs> Do we have to vote on it? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm adding one more thing on for new business, and I did talk with Laura about it. We had last year, the month of August, off our vacation time and we all talked about it. And for Laura scheduling, this is very happy and I'm happy about it that we get this settled. Would we like the month of July off or August again? Can we talk about that? Councilor Foster? Yeah, we're um, we're planning a, a wilderness camping trip that'll have us off grid uh, sometime during August. I'm not sure exactly when, so um, August would would be better for me. Um, yeah, me too. Thank you. That works Councilor for me. Miori? Yeah, that works. August is good. Councilor Very European of us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. No, that works fine for me too. Uh, yep. No problem. And Councillor Foster, I will talk to you separately because I don't know if I'll be around in July either, okay? So if there's a meeting, I will notify you and you can take it over, okay? Glad to. Thank you. Yeah, that's listed on the 5th of July. Uh, that year. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I'll bring my fireworks now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to change that appointment? Because we can do that. Uh, if that's if people are going to be away that weekend, it's an easier because we could reschedule it right now with Laura. We are not going to be away. We won't either. I'm good. So everybody's okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay. okay. So we're all set with that, uh, Laura. Laura, are you really okay with that, or are you not? Okay yeah, with that? I am. I was saying it's easy enough to change it to four o'clock on the twelfth, but 
then again, I'm wondering if after the sixth, we might be back in council chambers. So maybe, yes, because we, we don't know, we haven't heard anything. So maybe keeping it on the fifth was which wow. was more convenient. I'm just yeah. speculating. We have yeah. no announcement about when we're gonna resume. Yeah, the, the Boston City Council met in person last week. Did they? Wait, I was wondering if it was dependent on when the open meeting law provision changes right. and that, yeah, yeah, I have no, but anyways. <laughs> It's fine with me. I'm not planning to go away. All right, so we're all set with July. Okay, so I have down that we need one final motion. Oh. Did you actually? Did you want to talk about um, future department heads we may want to talk with um, before we we move to adjourn? Or or were you not planning to council? The future of department heads? Well, not, not the future so, of department heads, but if, if there were others um, that we wanted to, to talk with in city services. Sure, you can do that. Go okay. ahead and present them now. Yeah, I was thinking for down the road, not even right now, but I just wanted to bring up because I know I've heard from a number of constituents and councilors Mayori and Quinlan and Labarge, I'm sure you have as well, questions around um, the potential for aerial spraying for mosquitoes and municipal opt-out. And I reached out to Director O'Leary about it um, briefly, but it, it, I don't feel like while well, she's running vaccine clinics and we're coming out of pandemic, I wanted to have large conversations with her, but I would like to put that on our radar as a discussion I'd like to have. So perhaps in the fall we can invite her in, or um, I just wanted to put that out there as a discussion I'd like to have when she's not in the thick of what she's doing right now. That sounds fine. And I think that's something that's very important because I'm hearing it from people also. Thank yeah. You. Any Thank any you. other department heads? Councillor Quinlan? Uh, I don't I don't have any specific ideas right now. Uh, I thank, you. thank you for asking, but Councillor Miero? Yeah, not right now. Maybe the next meeting, Karen, yeah. will be more that will come up. We can put our hands up. Yeah, we'll probably have a better sense then too. Yeah, but Great. that's a good one about the mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah that, thank you. That's really good. Okay, so our last one. We need one final oh. motion. Move to I adjourn. Adjourn. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes.